month early April. Hello and welcome to the April 2024 version of Philmont Trek Talk group on Facebook's live Q&A where we talk about anything that you might need to know to get ready for a Philmont Trek. And sorry, I got distracted. I had an error message popped up. It looks like one of the one of the rumble feeds didn't take. So, okay, hopefully no one's trying to watch on rumble right now. We're still on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, X, and Odyssey. So if we if we lose one, I think we're still okay. But uh, thanks for bearing with me for that. The purpose of this is not Trek selection. That is an artifact from a prior month that I left up there by mistake. Let's see if I can get rid of that. Um, we're just going to go for that right now. Um, so anyhow, this month we are going to wander a bit uh, for two reasons. Number one, I would like to give people every opportunity to ask questions. So this is a reminder to anyone out there, regardless of where you're coming from, uh, as far as you know, Facebook or YouTube or whatever platform, feel free to, through YouTube or Facebook, ask us questions, anything that you need, especially if you're going on a trek this summer. We want to be sure we uh, get all those questions and help you get the answers you need. And um, so, so please be sure you do that. And participation uh, makes this much more valuable for everyone. Uh, we've also got um, a project that we're going to share with you that everyone who is trekking this summer can participate in if they choose. And uh, we're going to talk about weather at Philmont, and we're going to talk about packing for Philmont. I think we've got a couple different directions we can go with that. So that's what's on the agenda. So why don't we dive in with introductions? Hi, I'm Jeff. I'm, I'll be your tour guide this evening. I am very recently the former skipper of Sea Scout ship 4019 in Burlington, North Carolina. I have done one youth trek, three as an adult, two as a Philmont free agent. And I'm going to go ahead and throw it out there. I may mention it a few times tonight. It looks like I may need to find my way to the ranch this summer, uh, which I was not planning on doing. So if you have an open adult slot for a trek this summer, um, consider reaching out. Let me know if, uh, oh, look at that. Norm's got a question. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, if you've got a slot that uh, you could use an adult that, that's been to Philmont to help out with, let me know. I might be looking to do that. And with that, we're going to go this way with introductions from Kevin Bryan down through Scott and then back to Daryl. All righty. Well, uh, my name's Kevin. Um, I'm the scout master of Troop 222 up in Cedar Springs, Michigan. Um, going on my fourth official trek this year. Uh, two as a youth, two as lead advisor now. Um, just uh, I'd love to be in your position and going as a free agent. That sounds like fun. Maybe hit it up for uh, next year. Yeah, you should. So we've only got a couple yeah, people I'm who Scott routinely. Sure. We, we've only got a couple and, uh, people Scott who Master routinely. For several years, so ready to go. Yeah. Go. Good, good. And and I just want to interrupt to make a plug for the, the whole free agent thing. Um, Dale Wirtz has done it a few times. I've done it a couple times. It's it's really an opportunity to help out a crew that may have to cancel a trek if they can't get enough adults. So for anyone who is interested in in doing that in the future, please please consider throwing your name in the hat. It can uh, it can be really nice when you get to kind of save a trek for a crew that would have to cancel otherwise. So, all right, uh, Brian. Yeah, my name is Brian Keenan. I'm an associate crew advisor, uh, Crew 324 uh, in San Antonio, Texas. I've uh, been to Philmont twice as a youth, and last year, uh, my first time as an adult, uh, looking to go back, although not this year, and I'm glad to be here. All right, H happy to see you, and we'll, you. we're going to come back to you as soon as we're done with the introduction. All right, Scott? Scott O'Mary, I am the scout... <clears throat> Excuse me, Scoutmaster of Troop 259 here in Plano, Texas. Uh, fast approaching my ninth year. I've been on a Philmont uh, summer track as well as Philmont winter adventure. 
and I am headed back there this summer, not on a trek, but I'll be spending some time at the Philmont Training Center at the uh, Riado camp for the Philmont uh, Leadership Challenge. So looking forward to that. I think we get one day in the backcountry. I'll, I'll take any day I can get. Over to Daryl. Okay, Daryl Tadson, Greater St. Louis Area Council. Uh, multiple years as a crew advisor. Uh, most recently, multiple years as a council contingent advisor and uh, looking to go back this year and only have one crew in our contingent, but I'll be uh, joining them and uh, be their tour guide. Well, that, that's a nice service you provide to them for that. So a reminder, people, go ahead and get your questions in. If you have them, uh, we've got a couple that that I've seen that we're going to address a little bit later in the program. So anything you need to know, please get those questions in the comments so we can get to them. And now I want to hand it over to Brian, who has got a project he's going to share with us. So uh, it, it sounds pretty cool. How, how can we help you with this project, Brian? So uh, if if you all recognize the the nectar chip, I'm, I'm going through Wood Badge right now. And my one of my ticket items uh, well, my entire ticket was dreamt up on the trail at Philmont last year as I was planning on taking it in the fall. So I was thinking about what I wanted for my ticket. One of my ticket items is about helping uh, lessons learned for Philmont. Uh, there were a lot of things I took away from Philmont and, and I'm an experienced backpacker and I, you know, I was advising everybody. I was the ringer that they brought along on the crew to help everyone else but there were still a lot of things that surprised me. And uh, what I thought would be a good uh, lessons learned repository would be to solicit people coming back from Philmont to get a repository of what surprised you? What do you wish you had, uh, someone had told you? Uh, what, what things, uh, you know, did you not expect, you know, both good and bad? Uh, things that you you would maybe want others to know. Uh, so I'm, I'm putting together as my ticket item a, a web page of YouTube videos. And what I'm doing is soliciting, and some of you may have already heard from me. Uh, I've, I've got about 50 some odd uh, advisors uh, that through Jeff's uh, uh, Facebook group, I've contacted them. So some of you may have heard from me already. I may have, have petitioned you or, or solicited you. Uh, and for those of you who I haven't, um, I, I will put in the chat a couple of links. Uh, the first one is is the video I made when I got back from Philmont uh, as kind of a template. Here's, here's kind of what I'm looking for. Uh, these were my thoughts, but of course, yours are your own. What I'm looking for is if you want to participate, I'll give you some pointers. Uh, take some mental notes while you're at Philmont. And when you get back, record yourself, or you don't have to record it if, if you'd rather not. Uh, and I will post it to the web page. I'm going to curate the web page so that people can, you know, find uh, common common themes and things of that nature. But I'll post uh, two links in the chat here. One is my own personal submission, and another one is a link to the the web page. Uh, it's only got my stuff on it right now, and and a link to some of Jeff's stuff. But uh, this is uh, you, you can uh, look at it and kind of figure out where it's going to go. And I would love to have your submission uh, uh, if you would participate. That sounds pretty simple and pretty straightforward. So uh, I think that's going to be a really nice resource for people. And uh, it sounds pretty cool to me. So, Brian, is this a, a separate website or is it a YouTube channel or how, how you got it organized? So what I'd like people to do record themselves and send me the link, then I will post it on the, the website so people can find all of uh, all of the recordings will all be on YouTube. You know, we'll, we'll put them all out there so it's all public. Uh, and my my web page is basically just a, you know, a way to find all this stuff and, and some sort of organization to it all. A new a new Selden's list. I'm not I'm not familiar with that one. So uh, there are lots of things out there, lots of resources out there. Uh, so I don't know if this is a new idea. I just 
it's just something that occurred to me as I was like, gee, I wish someone had told me that, or gee, I wish someone had told me that. So I, you know, I recorded all my thoughts uh, and I'm sharing them because I think, you know, they're worth sharing. At least I think they are. And I would love to hear everybody else's. And hopefully uh, for those of you going, you watch a few of these videos, maybe pick up some, some tips and tricks and things that you, you know, no one told you. And uh, I personally would like it to steer mostly away from gear because there's lots of gear reviews out there. Uh, you know, if you found something that was particularly useful for Philmont, um, that's legit. But, you know, I, I'd, I'd like it to not be a gear review thing, but to, to more be a here's what's useful at Philmont type of thing. Yeah, that sounds pretty reasonable to me. So excellent. I could I could see us uh, coming back to you, Brian, and. Uh, maybe July, August, and September to kind of uh, give us a wrap up and a review, you know, con you know, compress it and say, you know, here were the highlights, here were the, here were the top 10 comments, you know, I wish I brought, you know, toilet paper or whatever, you know, <laughs> type yeah. of thing that uh, you could, uh, you know, summarize your findings. So I'm getting one of the, the links to post. It's, the, uh, in the comments. One of them is my personal, mm -hmm. uh, but Jeff, the one where it's like the website for everyone to look at, that one's not, I've tried it three times and it's not letting me post it. So I don't know if there's a uh, administrative thing there or what. Could be. Uh, I don't have a good, if you can, if you can paste it in the private chat. Okay. So on the that. right side in StreamYard, yeah. the bottom one should be private chat. Here it is. Oh, yep. All right. So let me that and then I'll put that in the paste and then I'll hit post. Thank you. Here we go. And yeah, so that's, that's the site. It's a uh, you know, there's not much on it right now. It's just a, a, a skeleton for this for this project, but uh, that's where it will be. You can uh, certainly throughout the summer as I get uh, submissions, I'll I'll uh, I'll I'll post them and you can. Uh, you know, it'll be live as, as things come up. There we go. Here's here's what it looks like so far. And so, yeah, I'd, I'd seen this a while ago when we talked. And uh, everyone, please, uh, if, if you have some information you think is going to be useful, please consider sharing when you get back from your treks. I think that's going to be... Um, it's got a lot of potential to help people who um, are prepping for treks either later in the summer or next year. If someone gets back, this is a neat thing. If you're going kind of early through mid on your trek for, for the summer, you can actually get feedback that's really going to help people for this summer. We saw that last year and potentially the year before when people hit the trail and were reporting immediately bugs are crazy especially in the south country where that had never been an issue before at least generally is not an issue so you can learn things and share them early to help people that same trekking season or you know to go in the archive to help people for future seasons moving on so don't don't underestimate the uh, the, the positive impact you can have by sharing things that you learn on the trail all right excellent well, we appreciate you being here and sharing that and um, I'll welcome you to stay and be a part of the discussion if sure. you like or check out if you need to. Whatever you want to do, you're, you're welcome either way, Brian. So okay. um, so thank you. I guess uh, the last little bit, I, I'll put my my email address in the chat. Uh, so okay. if anyone would like to participate, they can contact me. Good, good. All right. Excellent. So uh, let's see. The other agenda items that we had here, I've got uh, weather packing and open jobs. Why don't we talk about open jobs so we don't forget, right? Um, and, and I mentioned that I know some offers have uh, gone out. I heard last week um, Shelly O'Neill told me that they already had all the ranger positions for this summer filled. So if you have someone who is dying to be a ranger, they could still submit their information, their application. And uh, as with any hiring cycle, there are going to be people who have to pull out for some reason. Um, 
they may have some openings come up. So they can kind of go on the waiting list. If openings come up, there is potential they could get a call, but all the positions have been filled. They're probably not if they're looking to be a ranger. We know they always need people for places like the dining hall, but uh, a lot of the departments have been actively sending out offers um, either last week or this week, and the positions are filling up fast. So if you have people who um, have have figured out they have some availability and they want to apply, you better get those applications in or there won't be anything left. <laughs> mm-hmm. So just yesterday, I completed a job reference for one of my former scouts nice. at Philmont. He submitted, did the reference, got a call and an offer all within a few hour time frame in housekeeping. So I know housekeeping yeah. is yeah. needing people. I don't know what that entails, but um, they're quick when they want to be. Sure. The other thing, too, is uh, Philmont also operates all year round. Uh, you could be applying for a fall mm-hmm. position. That's a good point. And and even winter, you know, it, it you know, let let them know on your application that, you know, it's not just, you know, for the summer primary camping season, but you know, you'd be willing to work the the fall period or the or the winter period. Yeah. I think they've got uh, they got a few full time positions listed as well. If anyone wants to go out there and uh, and live and work year round at Philmont, I I want to say there's three or four positions available when I looked a few days ago. So and there's the other thing, Jeff, we talked about before was the the individual programs. Sure. So if you want to go as an individual for OA Trail Crew. Um, rocks the conservation trail building trail crew uh, rayado any of those individual programs uh, i don't know the availability if any of them are full or or what but uh, those are those are other ways that you you know can participate in the film on challenge right and, and Daryl, those are specifically for youth, correct? Correct. Yes. All right. So we, we've got all of those listed here on the screen. And um, they do have a financial aid application that if anyone, uh, regardless of what kind of trek you're going on, you can fill that out and see if they have anything available. I actually talked to... Um, uh, one of the people who manages the fund for that at an event a year or so ago. And uh, and he said that they often don't exhaust the funds they have available for any given year, that the people just don't apply. So uh, I would say um, for people who have the money and it's not a hardship for them to go and pay for themselves, maybe it's not worth the hassle. But anyone else... If you got to go do fundraising or anything else, uh, just just consider putting in that application uh, because the money's there and and that's why they have it. Yeah, we we have uh, we're I'm working on 2025, and uh, I know a couple of people are going to be applying. It's a father and three sons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kachin. All right, I'll share another bit of information since I have the web page up. Usually what we see is the Film Up Preparedness YouTube broadcast, the live thing that they do, very much more formal and structured than what we do, right? Um, theirs is typically, we'll do it on a Tuesday, they do it on a Thursday. Uh, they're not doing it this week. We're, we're on separate weeks. They're doing it next week on the 18th. That is next week, right? And that's yeah, going to be, and, and that's going to, the, the subject there is going to be a wrap up and yeah. kind of cover, you know, a lot of, a lot of subjects. It's typically they have one or two subjects that they, that they focus on. Yeah. And we're, we're down to two months before tracks start roughly 59 days, 12 hours at some number of minutes. Um, okay. So but we're, we're getting down there. 
who's counting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sal, as I know that. Oh, yeah. Always. Always. Um, okay. So let's dive into some of our other topics. Oh, Brian, did you want me to put your email address in the public chat? Sure. Yes, okay. please. Okay. Sorry. I so just if anyone... Really if anyone would like to contact me, uh, if, if I hadn't already contacted you through Facebook, if, if you're listening to this and you're like, hey, I'd like to participate, yeah, please drop me a line. You know, we'll have, a, we'll have a, a certain number of people who aren't here tonight, but will watch the, the rerun or the recorded sure. message. So, Yep, there we go. So that's in the comments. If anyone would like to go grab that email address. And uh, I am going to ask people, please use that email address for good. Okay. Just because we shared it. All right. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Actually, probably don't even do some of the things I would do. Just just be nice with it, please. Um, I did want to share that um, there is a link out there for if you need people on your crew or you'd like to find a crew to join, we've got a section of our group on Facebook where we put that. But uh, I just found, I knew this link was out here. I thought you had to get to it through the portal. I found it on the website where you can get to it uh, if you would like to apply either to have someone added or, or if you would like to go on a trip. I guess. Or it looks like this one is just if you'd like to. I guess you go through the portal if you have a crew and you'd like to add someone, and then you can go through the website if you would like to be considered to be added to a crew. So, yeah, coming um, coming through the portal, you have to have a password and sign in, and right. that is, and that is for the registers crews saying, "Hey, we are looking to flesh out our crew." Um, yep. This this page would be for the onesie twosies who are. Yep. identifying to film on, Hey, I would like to go, you know, anybody, right. uh, kind of like a free agent, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, Not absolutely. Free. Yeah. So let's see, uh, Norm asked a question earlier. What's the fee for renting a backpack? Who, who knows that? The last I heard, I think it's 30 bucks. That's what I thought. That I sounds heard. right. Well, you know, um, yeah. Probably it's not probably it is in the um, in the advisor's guide or the handbook. You know, to adventure. Sure. And both both of those um, you can download. So. Yeah. So, and a thought on that, that that I'll share, and I'd love to hear you guys' opinions on this. I have always told people that I personally consider that a last resort. Like if you have someone who doesn't have a pack, can't borrow a pack, has no resource to get one except that, then you know it's going to be a good pack. And there is a fair chance that the person who fits the pack for them will get it right. And they'll have, you know, a quality pack that fits them reasonably well. Um, I've heard some horror stories of people who didn't get fit well and the pack was miserable. And, um, and personally, uh, as a professional gear reviewer, I've tried lots of backpacks. And I can tell you, I often don't know for several days whether it's a really good fit or not. A bad fit, you can tell quickly, like a really bad fit. But some of them, they feel good until you're on day four or five and you realize that little tiny bit of rub in that one spot on day one that you're like, you barely don't even notice it, right? day four or five it's rubbing a raw spot in you so uh i am i personally am very hesitant to recommend to anyone that you uh that you buy any gear right before a trek or that you rent gear just for the trek that you haven't used on your shakedowns like how are you doing shakedowns if you don't have a good backpack uh, but I understand there are some people that for travel restriction reasons, for budget reasons, for other logistic reasons, um, they end up needing one. And, you know, if your gear gets stolen or the airlines loses it, then yes, roll with it, make the best of it. But if you can test every bit of your gear, I, I'm a big proponent of doing that 
on your shakedown? Yeah, the, the, the big downside is that you've not had the opportunity, you know, to work with it and, you know, pack it and so forth. Uh, plus, bringing your gear out, not in a backpack. I don't know how you're going to bring it in a duffel bag, a plastic bag or what. I mean, all your boots and shoes and clothes and so forth. But uh, yeah, the biggest downside is how to pack it, how to wear it, how does it feel? And you've not had the yeah. experience with it. Now, the other the other thing is the yeah, tent no, I spent the dining fly. A lot of time on that. Um, I I wouldn't have a problem with the tents uh, mm -hmm. using theirs. Yes, you have you've not had the opportunity to practice with them, but they're they're simple, easy, rugged, durable not that bad on weight. Uh, I mean, if you can set up a tent or if you set up a tent, you can set up one of these. It's a, it's a two pole cross corner to opposite corner to opposite corner. Right? It's pretty straightforward. And uh, the quality is going to be decent. So. Unless you get a bad one. <laughs> no, for yeah. real. Or you, get you know the feed of you get not back worrying back. about a rented pack rubbing yeah. you the wrong way on day four is to yeah. also rent a pair of shoes uh, for your trek. Then your really? feet will hurt so bad you won't even notice the, the rubbing them in the back on your. That's feet. a really good point. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I mean, I've, I've got a similar thought on the on the tent that. Uh, Yes, we know they're they're a little heavy because they're made to be extra durable and used over and over. But you're kind of at the mercy of how well the prior crew reported any issues with it uh, to have them repaired before it was issued to you and how well they did the rewaterproofing. Um, and if they are diligent, did a good job, then maybe you'll be fine. But I've talked to too many people who have had uh, or seen too many reports from people who had real issues with the rental tents. I, I call them rental tents. The, right. It's the, part of your fee, but it's not an additional charge. But uh, unlike the backpacks, which are an additional charge, right? The you are, I don't want to say required, but your your ranger, if you if you do use rental tents, uh, they will they will ask you to hang it up, open it up, stick your head in. You know, are you seeing holes and things like that? It's not just Here's the bag. Take it and you know leave. You have you do have a chance to inspect it. Sure. Yep. And you know whether it's clean, not clean, has a particular odor to it <laughs> uh, from the previous occupants. You know you have the right to. Hey, the, I'm not I'm not happy with this. Can I have a substitute? No problem. They'll you know they'll ask you what's wrong with it if it's a if it's a small hole, they may give you a patch and patch it up for you. Yeah. So. Okay. So you mentioned something uh, on our on our agenda. One of the things we we're going to talk about. Um, but uh, actually, before we get to that, Kevin, you started to say something else earlier, and I think you may have uh, oh. may have gotten lost here. Yeah, that's okay. Um, what I was going to say is with the rental packs. Um, I know me personally. I spend several hours figuring out how I want to locate my stuff in my pack. I couldn't imagine taking a pack I've never seen before and just being like, yeah. this is how my stuff is going to fit in it and be happy with it. Yeah. Um, that's I a hundred percent agree. So uh, two articles that I'm going to share here off of, uh, off of my website, which is the official sponsor of this group, uh, which I probably haven't mentioned in several months. But uh, let's see, one of them relates exactly to what you were saying and the other to something that Daryl said earlier. So organize your pack to make your Philmont Trek easier. I, I completely agree with Kevin. I wouldn't want to show up and have to figure out how to organize my new pack um, that I've never used before. But uh, I'll encourage people to go um, read this. It, or at least wrap your head around the idea that uh, kind of the mantra I use for packing my pack for a trek 
is I want the items that I expect to not need to be the ones that are buried and hard to get to. And uh, everything else is stationed in the pack according to when I think I'm going to need to get to it next, like the order that I'm going to need to get to it in. And uh, things I need to get to quick are easily accessible and things that I don't expect to have to get too quick can be buried a little bit more. Like rain gear, I want to be able to just get it. I no no digging to taking off the pack and digging through it. I want to be able to get my rain gear without taking my pack off, um, which is part of the reason that I wear I I do a poncho is I don't have to take my pack off to put it on or to take it off when the rain stops. I can just throw it all over my pack and barely even have to break stride. Um, but um, you know that how you organize your pack really can make a difference. And I have dropped that link out here. So if you care to read that article, you can. And then the other one to Daryl's comment about how you get it there. Uh, I've got an article that uh, I shared a link to as well um, on how to get your pack there. And the big deal, in my opinion, is that you have some protection for your pack so that the you know that the airline doesn't completely maul your pack on the way there because i mean if you ever sat in an airplane looked out the window and watched them loading and unloading i think it's a practical reason like they don't want to hurt their backs so they don't gently sit things down they just toss them so you you got to have some protection for your gear and um i've got another article out there about that so those are two that that might be useful to you that I have shared in the comments. Does anyone, anyone have any further comments on organizing your pack or getting your stuff to and from the ranch? You're muted, Daryl. Ke Kevin, go ahead, and Daryl can figure out how to unmute himself. Okay. Um, yeah, I was gonna there say we we, uh, we took we took Amtrak and. For Amtrak, we just carried our packs on as they existed. Uh, no things hanging off of them, like everything's in it. Um, but uh, that was really simple. And then when you got off the, the train at the other end, you just throw the pack on and carry it to the bus. Um, yeah. But you could throw it in a duffel bag. It would be, you know, frowned upon. It would just be le harder to carry it, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. This picture right here is uh, of the luggage area on an Amtrak train. Uh, I don't remember if it was to or from Philmont, but you can see how they're stacked in okay. there. And you generally are going to put them there and take them out yourself. So so I completely yep. agree. Less critical, but I still, I don't want to take a risk of someone snagging a shoulder strap and ripping it and damaging a pack or whatever. I, I am going to generally want to put it in something. Facebook user. All right. Welcome back. We have not seen Facebook user in a little while. Um, if you'd like to define yourself, you can go to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook, and it will give you an opportunity to select to, to show who you really are um, so that you don't have to be Facebook user. Okay. I'm unmuted. Um, hey. All right. <laughs> what I was going to, what I wanted to say was, uh, if you are allergic or have medical issues, EpiPen or whatever, whether you rent a pack, bring your own, whatever method you use, put it in the same place all the time and let the entire crew know where it is. Um, you know, there, there's been too many instances where things have happened and somebody, you know, the person laying on the ground is the one that needs the EpiPen and where in the heck in the pack is it? Or gee, the pack is back at base or at back at camp because we're out doing shooting or, you know, spar pool climbing and somebody's got to run back and get it. So, you know, <clears throat> my, my word of wisdom, if you will, pack that in the same place all the time, the upper left-hand pocket or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good thinking. Um, just <clears throat> a suggestion when you're coming 
off the trail. And if you don't have time to do the laundry facilities at Philmont before you head back home, and if you're driving and you're in close proximity to your smelly stuff, you might want to pack a trash bag and tie it up really nice and tight and put as far away as you can from your person. Uh, Ziploc zip, zip bags work real well for organization and uh, odor control. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I also for water. washing clothes. Washing yeah. your clothes. Yep. Yeah. But at least if you can't wash the clothes, wash your body. Take a shower. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Absolutely agreed. I, and, I think uh, I can I can look up at Kevin and say, I, I bet on your way back on Amtrak, when you walk through the train, you knew when you were in the scout car. Now, now with our group, we forced, well, we didn't force, but everyone took a shower and did laundry. So, so yeah, well, we were good. we were pretty clean smelling. Plus, we well, took an know, extra day on the back end at Philmont. You, so, uh, we had that extra nice. day to do a second shower and make sure we had time for laundry and all that good stuff. Yeah, you yeah. may have been clean, but not everybody else was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I've we were the only that. group on the train at the time. So. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Be right back. All right. Well, I guess Daryl's had enough of that. So, uh, Scott, you want to transition into, uh, well, actually, before we move off of packing, anything else for packing that, that anyone wants to share before we move on to weather at Philmont? Maybe touch a little bit on, and I don't know this because I always drive, uh, where you leave your stuff at Philmont when you're on the trail. Sure, sure. Um, yes, and give me just a moment. That I can actually share a picture. I'm scrolling over on the other. I'll, I'll show you guys what I'm doing here. Um, all right, I think those are all actually once we got on the trail. I thought I had some pre-trail pictures and video in here. Mm -hmm. This this assumes you didn't bring a rental car or a drive in. You took the train in or something, a shuttle or something like that. Got yeah. yeah. Free trek. Let's look in here. All right, we're getting close. I have found initial arrival. I thought this was going to be a whole lot easier. Hold on. Because we got some really good pictures while we were putting stuff in the lockers that I thought would be I think great. It was a, I think I saw it. A, is that not it? Uh, here we go. There's one. So th this will show you a couple things. That is um, a bag that was used to transport a backpack so it wouldn't be damaged uh, either uh, in the van getting to the train station on the train when we change from one train to the other. And I got to be honest. I've only done the train on one, one track. And when we had to change trains, I was really, it was hectic. We had to move a lot of stuff really fast and the, the platform was crowded and I was a little worried for things getting lost or broken or people, you know, especially some of the civilians, so to speak, who were, uh, might, might've gotten caught up in, in part of our process. But then, so when you get there, these are some of the lockers. You, they have different sizes, but you see um, she's actually on like one of those little library type ladders or, or a uh, hardware store type ladder. They used to get stuff off the upper shelves that you can wheel around to position it where you need to. So if you got to get in and out of those upper ones, you can. And there's some pretty good volume in there, but you got to pack it smartly or you'll run out of space. Yeah, they're they're two two square and three foot deep, two foot square. Mm. Okay. They will if you have a crew of twelve, they will they will issue you two lockers. Of course, we don't have good lighting in it to really get a look at what was in there, but uh, yeah, and and. and you know that that's the one size, and then we saw some uh, tall lockers, and there, there were a couple different types. But yeah, 
And Jeff, That's they do cool. have the ability to store a few extra things at security. So if you had yeah. something you absolutely yeah. couldn't fit in there, they, they do have a, a lock storage over there that they've mentioned that is available. I, like yeah. once again, don't go crazy. Don't bring a bunch of extra stuff that you don't need. But uh, if you were to happen to run out of room for a backpack or valuable items, like say you brought a laptop for some reason, you didn't want to take it in the trail or leave it in the locker, take it over security. So I took, um, and, and thank you, Peter, for sharing the information on uh, fitting 13 people's worth of stuff in two lockers. So, um, yeah, that, that's good to know um, because you will need some travel stuff like a day pack for when you're in base camp or if you do any other side stuff on the way there. Uh, and there is a little space to store some of that. Your class A's for travel. This is the bag I've taken the last couple times uh, because my backpack fits in it and you know everything I need fits in there. Um, and there was some concern, like if everyone had a bag like that on a big crew, would everyone be able to fit in the locker? And um, the lockers are sized so that there wasn't much extra space, but um, an airline approved bag like that will just fit. The, the problem that I will warn people about is if people don't bring, that one is soft and it collapses to about an inch and a half or two inches tall. If, if people try to bring like rigid uh, luggage, like they would use for a normal vacation or whatever, like a lot of people these days are using hard side luggage when they fly. Um, if everyone's got hard side luggage, you better hope you can nest a whole bunch of stuff together and that it happens to fit the dimensions of those lockers because otherwise you're going to be out of luck. Like soft bags are good for things that are left in base camp because you can conform them to the shape that's available in that locker. Big, rigid, hard bags are going to cause you some problems. So please encourage people. And that's the type of thing that people probably wouldn't think about if you hadn't been there before. You may not think to advise your crew, don't bring hard-sided luggage. You will not have a good place to store it. All right. I think that probably is going to wrap up our discussion of packing. So are we ready to dive in? Let's do it. Okay. Uh, Let's do it. Daryl's trying to show us something, but he keeps, he keeps, oh, I clicked the wrong one. I meant to click this. Yeah. He, he keeps green screening himself. That, here we go. It's like magic. Yeah. You're going to yeah. have to take it off. Uh, yeah, I, can take off. I, I think we could see that it's basically a bag for travel that says Philmont and it has crew information on it. Um, oh, it's even got a title. Look at that. Can I get one of those? I've uh, with D Tatson on it. Uh, well, yeah, a shameless plug. Yeah. Uh, are you are you still making and making those available for people to purchase? Yes, that's that's my shameless plug. Yeah. And that's uh, fine. That's we fine. have them, and we can put the uh, you know the troop, the council on them. Uh, Sal has been using them for a couple of years. Uh, they also have straps on them. I don't know if you noticed it, but you could actually wear it as a backpack. It's not the most comfortable thing, but it has straps that you could throw it on your back. I think that's very worthwhile. And, um, and yeah. uh, Kevin, to your comment about traveling on the train, um, 100 backpacks in the train, all the blues and the browns and the greens look the same. But if I got eight in that neon green or a blue or an orange, all of I need to do is have yep. those eight bags thrown off and I can sort eight bags amongst the participants. Yeah. Yeah. So that's we, smart. We, can do, we can do those in multiple colors. I think this year, uh, one of the ladies in, in our district here, she's has it runs an embroidery sewing business and she makes them. I think we're doing about 65 or 70 this year. So do you know what kind of lead time is required? Because we saw a trick start in about 
59 and a half days. <laughs> so, you know, um, roughly. I would, we, we would, depending upon the color you use and so forth and the material we have in order, and we're about a four week lead time. So if you're interested, contact me. <laughs> that actually uh, reminds me of one of the, the suggestions I posted in my video is uh, something for crews to think about is uh, custom make your own bear bags. It mm -hmm. will make your life a lot easier at Philmont to not have to use their their uh, woven burlap bags that kind of fray and fall apart. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a, a good a good crew project. You could build some esprit de corps by having something that looks different. So when you have a a, a bear line with a whole bunch of bags, you know just by looking which ones are yours, and you can you can do some things to them uh, to make your life easier. So just a an idea for you. Yeah, they. They've gone away from burlap. They're into the poly. Right. Now. The poly things, yeah. they, but they're not hemmed. So yeah. like the. They're not rope, hemmed as well. Yeah. They're, they're not right. hemmed. So they all, they, they just fray and fall apart. They're ter They're mm -hmm. annoying. While we're, while we're talking about ordering stuff from Daryl, are these still available? <laughs> yep. All right. So that's a couple things. You may need to put an email address or or preferred contact method in the comments in case anyone would like to reach out and say, hey, send me some stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. If, it, if anyone wants it, I can, I can, I can sell one that says Scott on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very popular, popular one. It is. Yeah. It's, it's one of our most popular ones. <laughs> yeah. Let me see if I can. Awesome. Okay. Do you make rain rain gear too, uh, Daryl? <laughs> no, no. He makes it rain gear. Makes it rain. Makes it rain. Well, we're going to take that segue to talk about weather. I'll I'll kick it off. Uh, first, remind everybody that you might want to refresh your weather hazards training. It's about 15, 20 minutes online at my.scouting.org. Even if you're up to date on it, maybe your area doesn't get a lot of snow or hail and you maybe snooze through that portion of the training. You might want to refresh your memory because if you haven't been out to the Rockies or the Cascades or any of those tall mountains out there in the West, uh, you get a lot of microclimates. And I remember my last trek out there, uh, it hit 100 degrees on the porch at Dan Beard camp. And then a few days wow. later up on Baldy, we were walking past snow on the ground and it hailed and lightning on us. So we hit all the different weather hazards, not a hurricane, did not come across a hurricane while we were there, but you will do a lot of weather experiences. I think I got hail more often th at uh, Philmont than I've ever gotten anywhere else at any other campsite. So I don't know if that's a regular thing at Philmont, but uh, well, every crew we've sent, they've gotten hailed on. So, be aware. Rain, rain. Whenever it happens, um, a lot of times it is accompanied with hail. Mm -hmm. um, and the further, the deeper you go into the season, uh, after July first to the fifteenth, uh, the local people refer to it as the monsoon season, and mm -hmm. rain is much more common than the early part of the season. You know, when the when camps open on June the eighth. You know, middle June is it's fairly rain free, but you know, as soon as I said that, everybody's going to have rain. Uh, you know, it, and I know I've mentioned this many times on this ses these sessions. I know we've mentioned a lot. Is you really want to get up early? You want to get up, do all your major hiking in the morning, uh, because your your bad weather is typically in the afternoon. You might get some showers and things like that during the daytime, but your Nasty stuff usually waits until one, two in the afternoon before it really hits. So get your stuff done early. Tends to build up on the west side of the, the mountain ridge. And then by noon, one o'clock, it's got enough energy that it pushes over the top and dumps. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, um, um, and that's, the bad part, that's the bad part because you can't see it coming because it's on the yes. other side of the hill. Speaking of rain, I know we've mentioned about packing gear. 
Jeff, you mentioned you want your rain gear real close, maybe in the brain where you can get it real quick, real fast. Uh, what are you using for your rain gear? Are you using a poncho, a kilt? What's what, what's everybody using these days? Yeah, I, I'm a poncho person. I've, okay. I've always used a poncho. And uh, I, my two cents on this is your your rain gear is to keep you from getting hypothermia. It's not to keep you dry um, because it doesn't matter what you take. Um, you're going to get a little bit wet somewhere, somehow, whether it's from the inside, from sweat accumulating or from the outside, from water getting in. The goal is to keep you from getting hypothermic. And uh, for me, the um, I've used ponchos my whole scouting life. Done. I'm trying to think, have I ever taken a rain suit? I've taken rain suits on backpacking trips and never had a good experience. So I'm purely a poncho guy. But there's a learning curve no matter what type of rain gear you take. So I would advise people... Your best bet is not to go see the fine people at the Tooth of Time Traders hours before your trek and purchase whatever they have. And the first time you use it is out there. Like, whatever you're going to use, when you see bad weather and it's safe, like you're not going to get swept away in a tornado or a flood or, you know, have branches falling on you, um, get out there with your rain gear and test to see how well it's going to work and learn any lessons you need to with that rain gear at home or on your shakedown hikes, not on a trek where you are fairly powerless to do anything about it. So what does everyone else use? I use the rain suit, the jacket and the pants, uh, mostly because I'm a little cheap and I do other treks like Northern Tier and you can't they don't allow you to use a poncho at Northern Tier because a poncho is a drowning hazard, um, potentially, if you're wearing a poncho in a canoe, should you capsize, for example. So I, I wanted something that I could wear at multiple different high adventures, and that's why I went with the jacket, with the zip pit. So you're right, sweating is a challenge when you wear those uh, suits. I know some people do kilts, uh, rain kilts, and have a lot of success. Daryl, is that you? Yep. Yep. I, use, I I'm a I'm a rain jacket, uh, kilt, skirt, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, so uh, Jeff just posted a, a link in the the chat of uh, what I use. Uh, it's a it's a a link about an umbrella. I pair mm -hmm. an umbrella with a kilt uh, until it gets horrendous. Uh, and when it gets horrendous, then I have a, a jacket that I put on. But I, I prefer the umbrella, unless it's really windy, I prefer the umbrella because it's maximum ventilation. Uh, and one of uh, being from Texas, one of the things I've learned in Texas hiking is uh, shade. Shade is a good thing. And so the umbrella is actually a sun umbrella that works great. Uh, yeah, that picture right there, you can see the little white things on the ground. That's hail. Uh, yeah, um, uh, I took this out on one of our shakedowns and it was super hot that day in Texas Hill Country and the other advisors were like, ooh, and uh, so myself and the other two advisors, all three of us had umbrellas and, and we were the envy of many. Yeah. Does that, uh, it, in that picture, it looks like it somehow straps onto the pack. Yes, I have. Uh, I've I've rigged my pack up. Uh, Gossamer Gear sells these little uh, buckle things, and I sewed it onto my pack strap so that uh, so that it would just hold on there without uh, without anything. Uh, lots of there. different people make them, but I, I believe Gossamer Gears are the best because it's a little plastic buckle as opposed to bungee cords or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I just cut the. If you zoom in on that picture. On, on my shoulder, you'll see a little gray buckle that's that's out of uh, off of a, a Gossamer gear thing that I just cut off and, and physically sewed it right to my pack strap. Okay. Yeah, I use the jacket. I'm in the jacket because I can use I use that as, uh, you know, 
for warmth in the evening when, you know. Is Daryl, is that the only thing you're using for warmth? Oh, is no. It, I, I don't usually it. bring a, a, a puffy, packable down jacket, too. No, I don't. I use that. And then I have a fleece, a fleece uh, okay. and a wind shirt that I use underneath if I need if I need it. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. And right, we're just talking about check. weather for summer treks. The the fall, the winter adventures, completely different gear, weather conversation. Mm -hmm. We're not going to talk about that tonight. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We're five minutes. Five minute warning, everyone. And uh, and Brian, I'm glad you mentioned that because um, I've I've got a I want to say G G4 or G something. I can't remember. Someone okay. sent me one of those umbrellas a, a couple years ago. And I have not used it yet, but it actually has straps on it that hook to the shoulder straps. And, and I keep saying I'm going to try that. And uh, I think you may have pushed me over the edge. Like, I've been skeptical, but, yeah, I, that could be pretty neat. Um, so at, at Philmont, being out in the exposed sun, like on Tooth of Time Ridge, oh, it was a godsend. It was just amazing because there's no, there's no shade on that entire ridge. It was yeah. fantastic. Or, or like the picture here where you're walking on a road. I mean, that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons we tell people, um, given a choice of, of going under tree cover or on a road, roads are probably going to be steeper, have more loose rocks, and often you have no tree cover to shade you. Taking your own shade looks kind of brilliant in that scenario. So you, you said something, Brian, that concerns me. Cause I don't, I don't like, I'm not a heights guy walking on the tooth of t the, the ridge with an umbrella in the wind would freak so, me out. So, <laughs> um, it was a little windy. I just held on to it. Okay. Uh, but it wasn't super. I mean, the only time I don't use it is under heavy tree cover where it's catching on stuff and in the wind. Okay. Uh, but, uh, that's, that's not often, you know, you, you work around it. Okay. They do have wind at Philmont. They do. They do. Yeah. They do. Yeah. On occasion, it's been known to happen. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Awesome. So, well, they have all kinds of weather at Philmont. Just be prepared, guys. This is certainly last call for anyone who has any questions they haven't asked yet. Uh, your window of opportunity is very rapidly closing. What is Daryl oh, showing us here? Pack lines? That's with the pack line with bag. the that I showed you at Philmont. Wow. Yep, that does make it easier having everyone color coded, so you can just line and them they, up. Like and they are waterproof. There, totally and I like you said they had uh, straps you could use for a backpack. That's what I don't like about laundry bags is it can be awkward to get a hold of them if you're dragging I mean, them to yeah, a train yeah. station or an airport. Um, if you have wheels or straps or handles or something you can throw over your shoulders, I think it's a whole lot easier to use your protective over bag. Mm -hmm. uh, Daryl, you want to answer this one? And what, while you're reading that, um, what what Peter's asking about are these little blue tags right. that, uh, that we've got here that Daryl has made these before. And I think he said he was going to offer them again. And and so the whole idea is so we can identify ourselves in, uh, to each other, should we choose to, in base camp or on the trail, you can take something blue. Mm -hmm. This is the fancy version. I have on past treks just taken a blue ribbon and done like a double lark's head and put it around the, um, uh, I wear a sun hat with a little strap. I'll just hang it from that or a strap of on my pack. I'll have a little blue ribbon hanging off of that. Or you can clip something like this on. You can make your own. You can download that logo and make something your own. Daryl's frowning because he wants no, to sell you one. You, can, what does it say on the back? Is that Scott? This one? Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, that's Jeff. The ones, the ones we're doing now say supporting the Philmont recovery. Oh, that's oh, neat. And that one says Scott. <laughs> Under tape that says Jeff. <laughs> Here we go. That, that's how it went last on the last mm. trek was just because I, I couldn't find this one, but I had the one that I never sent to Scott. So, uh, Peter, I could probably send it to him. You, you, I've Peter, got it. You're uh, down there. Yeah. Uh, how to get a hold of me? Uh, do, do a direct message on Messenger. 
I'm in there detaching. And uh, and then it's the same, Norm. Norm's same asking Norm about the, for a bag. Mm -hmm. So look up Daryl Tatson in the group. Yeah, it's D. I think it's good D Tatson. So yeah, and um, send him a direct message or send me a message and I'll yeah. hook you up with it. Yeah. So. All right. Oh, and I need to talk to Norm about something else anyway, because um, I haven't been paying attention to what Sea Scout, sea Scout Academy is, but I need to go and refresh my wilderness first aid training, um, which means I need to take first aid CPR again, because I think those are probably expired either in the next month or it just... Yeah, the, I guess one of the other things we're going to mention, um, put it in right now, make uh, crew leaders, crew advisors... Uh, make sure you're doing your gateway. Uh, fees should be paid. You add somebody after 30 days before arrival, there's a $150 penalty. Um, you know, uh, get your med forms in. Uh, get your med yep. forms in. Get, get them uploaded so uh, the infirmary has a chance to review. If you have issues, uh, questions on your meds, submit the med form as much as you have, if you don't have it totally completed, uh, give it a day or two and then call Philmont, the infirmary, and they can pull it up and, and work with you over the phone, looking at the med form, you know, what, what is the situation, get their advice uh, ahead of time. Showing up yeah. with an issue uh, is not the way to go. It's just going to really slow down your in-processing. If you, if you think you might be close to the weight limit for your height. Right. Then you better get on that and a couple of ways. They either I, I got I got twenty pounds to lose. Well, personally. either that or you grow three inches. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a weight problem. That's a height problem. But uh, yeah, <laughs> but I'm not yeah, pushing the weight limit. Then get those med forms in. Get your uh, crew roster filled out uh, and all of that stuff because uh, that really really helps Philmont in planning ahead. You know, for manpower and meals and you know all of that stuff. Excellent. Yeah. That, Thanks everyone that for being here. Limit. Go ahead, Cap. I'll just I'll say that weight limit uh, for most people that that's the limit to get on the trail. You may not have a great time at that weight, so mm -hmm. if you feel like you're not in shape, go you know kick an extra ten off because uh, once you hit the trail, it's a whole different deal and you can't go back. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not close to the limit. Just, just so people understand that, that concept, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not close to the limit. I'm six, mm -hmm. four. I can be really heavy, right? Like I'm, I'm probably in the 275 group. I don't want to hit the trail over 200 pounds. I'm yep. 217 right before the program. When I stepped on the scale, I want to, I want to be under 200. Um, and also some of the activities like Horseback riding. Well, I'm just going to call it horse riding. Um, you have to be 200. Like, seriously, do they have to tell us to ride the back of the horse? Isn't that, couldn't that be just horse riding? Anyhow, I I, I want to be able to do that. But but just because it's I got bad knees and a bad back, and if I'm over 200, everything hurts more. If I get under, uh, even though I don't have to be to go on the trail, I could go today with what I weigh right now. I don't want to. And I highly recommend that other people um, do that as well. Jeff, we're all in scouting. Time. We've all had to say things we didn't think had to be said a couple of, more than a couple of times. True things have never been said. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, and with that, I want to thank everyone who was here this evening. We had two new panelists. I'd like to say thank you so much. We really appreciate you being here, spicing things up, giving us a different perspective. And um, we can mourn that Scott, not Scott, Sal, the other S, Sal and Rob and Andy and some of our other regulars were not able to join us this time. But thank you guys for being here. Really appreciate that. Um, moving forward, anyone would like to join us, uh, send me a note in, in the group or uh, a direct message within the Facebook group and we can consider. Uh, we, we don't take just anyone. We we're very discerning, but uh, we are always looking for new voices who have some interesting information to share. So um, thank you, everyone who is here. 
uh, especially people who ask questions and our panelists. We will be back on the second Tuesday of each month at 9 p.m. Eastern on all the different platforms we that we're on this week. And um, let's see. Uh, I think that's it for now. I think, should we shut it down? Is anyone not ready? Hi, Con. Hi, Con. Hi, Con.